Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In this episode, I want to talk about the Russian economy and specifically the impact of the sanctions. Now, whenever I make a video on this topic, it always causes a lot of debate in the comments section below. And a lot of people say, I don't know where you're getting your figures from. I don't agree. Russia will not be impacted by these sanctions. The sanctions are actually affecting the West more than they're affecting Russia. Russia will come out of this healthier and stronger than ever. So in today's episode, I've got a really interesting report that's been produced by the Russian authorities themselves. This was prepared for an internal meeting and has been leaked to the West. And it's been verified that this is a genuine report. So the numbers and the details that I'll give you in this video are coming directly from Russian experts in Russia. This document was prepared for President Putin to show him exactly what the estimated impact of the current sanctions will be. And I'll give you a heads up spoiler alert that the summary of this paper says that Russia could take until the rest of this decade to get back to the same level of economic performance that it was at before the start of the war. So that is 2030. We're talking about eight years time. So Russia is acknowledging that the sanctions are having a devastating impact on the Russian economy. And we'll go through in some detail. So we'll look at what they're estimating the impact will be on exports and imports. We'll have a look at some specifics for oil and gas and metals and machinery. We'll talk about the brain drain because this report has actually put a figure on how many people are leaving Russia right now. And then we'll talk about a few sectors that are picked out in this report, such as agriculture, aviation and pharmaceuticals. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think is likely to happen to the Russian economy over the course of the next three to six to 12 months, what the longer term impact is and what the impact of Russia's demise will be on the global economy. So before we get started on all of that, if I could ask you to give me a thumbs up at some point during this video, if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Don't forget, I always include chapters so you can skip over things if you don't have time to watch the entire video. And if you'd like to support the channel, please have a look below where you'll find the usual links to buy me a coffee and Patreon, as well as YouTube super thanks and membership. An internal report prepared directly for President Putin by Russian experts shows that the impact of the sanctions on Russia's economy will be a deeper and longer recession than originally estimated. The document is the result of months of work by officials and experts trying to assess the true impact of Russia's economic isolation due to President Putin's invasion of Ukraine and paints a far more dire picture than officials usually do in their upbeat public pronouncements. Bloomberg viewed a copy of the report drafted for a closed door meeting of top officials on August the 30th and the authenticity of this report has been verified by independent experts. The report itself looks at three different scenarios, the best case, the middle case or the inertia case as it's called in the report and the worst case or the stress case as it's referred to. Gross domestic product measures the market value of all of the goods and services produced by a country in a set period of time. And GDP of a country is how we measure how successful an economy is. And when we look at the biggest countries in the world, we always look at GDP. So currently, the USA is the largest country in the world by GDP and China is second. Russia, prior to its invasion of Ukraine, was ranked at number 11 in the world. And in 2021, Russia delivered around $1.8 trillion of GDP. Now, the Russian authorities have acknowledged that the sanctions will have an impact on GDP. And the latest official forecasts show a contraction of 2.9% in GDP for 2022. And despite Russia forecasting a return to growth on a quarterly basis in late 2022 or 2023, the forecast for the full year of 2023 is a contraction of 0.9%. These revised forecasts were made at the start of September and represent a significant improvement from the predictions made in August when Russia was forecasting a 2.7% fall in GDP in 2023. So the official figures for 22 and 23 are relatively positive. Given the massive amount of sanctions that have been applied against Russia, a fall of 2.9% and then another fall of 0.9% actually looks quite good, particularly when you take into account that the rest of the world is on the brink of a recession. So it's likely that we will see a fall in GDP 
in a number of countries, so not just Russia, it's likely that most developed countries will encounter falling GDP for 2022 and possibly even for 2023. However, the scenarios that have been put together in the internal report produced for President Putin take a far more pessimistic view than this. Detailed forecasts for 2022 have not been provided, but the report states that the economy could fall by 8.3% in the middle scenario and 11.9% in a worst case scenario in 2023. So if we put that into monetary terms, the official party line for 2023 is a fall of 0.9%. And that would represent a fall in income of around $52 billion for Russia. The middle case scenario of an 8.3% fall would represent a drop of around $149 billion in income. And the worst case scenario of 11.9% represents a fall of around $214 billion. So we're looking at a situation that is four times worse than the official party line. Now that is a significant movement. Now the report makes some really interesting statements with regards to the impact on imports and exports. The overview is that around about 25% of exports and imports have been directly impacted by the sanctions. However, the report goes on to state that it's not just the direct sanctions that are having an impact. The problem that Russia is facing is that they've got an effective blockade. So as well as the sanctions on individual products and items, they're finding it very difficult to be able to ship goods because they're not able to get easy access to shipping and transport and other forms of logistics that they need to move their products. So even though 75% of their exports have not directly been sanctioned, firstly, we've got these unofficial sanctions. So countries no longer want to deal with Russia. So a product may not actually be on the banned list, but companies and countries are deciding to buy things from other suppliers. So they don't want to buy Russian products. So it doesn't matter whether or not an individual item has been listed as a sanctioned good. A lot of countries in the world are boycotting Russian goods. So the knock-on impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine is far greater than the direct sanctions because the Western world does not want to trade with Russia anymore. They've become a pariah state and that's having a bigger impact on the economy. In addition to this blockade effect, the report also highlights the technology problems and the financial constraints. So I've mentioned this in a number of videos previously. Russia is dependent on technology from a lot of different countries in the Western world. And all of those countries are now switching off the supply of that technology. And that's leaving Russia high and dry in terms of being able to carry on with both its existing activities and also new developments. So I'll come on to talk about this later in the video when we come to talk about liquefied natural gas because Russia doesn't have enough facilities and it's lost that technology. So the loss of technology is causing Russia an immediate problem, but it's going to have an even bigger problem over the longer term. And it's the same situation with regards to the financial sanctions. Russia has lost access to not just the financial markets, but a lot of investment. The oil and gas industry in Russia has been developed over the last 30 years in conjunction with overseas partners. They've signed joint venture deals with companies like Shell and BP and ExxonMobil, and they've helped them with that technology and the development of all of those fields. Now, those business partners have all walked away. They did that at the start of the invasion. And Russia are now exposed and are left alone. And they're going to suffer from the lack of capital investment because those companies were able to put billions and billions of dollars into those projects in order to fund the development and the build and the technology and all the teething trouble that you have at the start of any of these projects. And now that they've lost those partnerships, they've lost access to that capital and the investment. And that's going to be a big problem for Russia at a time when they need huge amounts of investment to be able to carry on doing everything that they've been doing. So this report highlights technological and financial constraints that again are coming through as a direct and also an indirect result of the sanctions. The report goes on to warn of reduced production volumes in a range of export oriented sectors from oil and gas to metals, chemicals and wood products. While some rebound is possible later, these sectors will cease to be the drivers of the economy. 
And that statement is going to be a major concern for President Putin because oil and gas specifically have been the heartbeat of the Russian economy. Over the last 10 years, Russia has become reliant on the export of billions of dollars of oil and gas directly to the European markets. The pipelines that they constructed in conjunction with their European partners has meant that it's been very easy to ship huge volumes on a daily basis. And now that all of those supply lines have been cut and Russia are no longer able to access those markets, it's going to cause real pain for the Russian economy. And this report has highlighted the fact that Russia can no longer rely on these sectors to be the drivers of the economy. And if it isn't these sectors, then what will be the drivers? Because there isn't that much left. Raw materials is Russia's key strength. And if you take out those raw materials because you've got problems with production or actual delivery of those products, then it's going to be catastrophic for the Russian economy. In terms of imports, the report has identified the fact that there are simply no replacements to certain imported goods. And this is a discussion that we've been having on the channel for some time. Russia may well be able to source alternative items in certain categories from Asia and other countries, but it will be impossible to replace certain types of technology and other goods, and that will have a damaging impact on Russia. The global economy is fully integrated these days, and some countries are better at making things than others. And there are specialist hubs and companies that are design and technology focused all around the world. And if you own the intellectual property to certain types of technology, that is a really valuable asset. And you will only let other people use it under license. That's why certain companies become really valuable. That's how Bill Gates got to be one of the richest people in the world. He created Microsoft. They developed all of that technology and software, and they kept it within Microsoft. So if you want to use Microsoft products, you have to pay the license for it. And that's really the way things work all across the world. And Russia is now facing sanctions from a lot of those technology-driven companies and countries. So it's losing access to things that it just simply can't replace. You can't just invent technology overnight. It takes years and years of development and expertise. And Russia is cutting off all of those supply lines. And this report has identified the fact that there are certain things that Russia simply will no longer have access to. And that will have a damaging impact on the economy. And the report goes on to state that the restrictions on access to Western technology may push Russia a generation or two behind current standards as it's forced to rely on less advanced alternatives from China and Southeast Asia. So what the report is telling us is that Russia is going to have to take a backward step. It's going to have to downgrade its own technology. And that's not something that Russia wants to do, but they're forced into this situation because of their invasion of Ukraine. And one of the problems that Russia has is that some of its oil and gas and other facilities have been built on the very latest technology. So downgrading technology may not actually work. That may cause them real production problems in some of their facilities. The report goes on to state that on the import side, the main short-term risk is the suspension of production due to the lack of imported raw materials and components. Over the longer term, the inability to repair imported equipment could permanently limit growth. So what we're seeing here is that there is a short-term and a long-term implication of the lack of imports. The immediate problem of getting raw materials to carry on producing things is clearly evident. If you're reliant upon importing certain things in order to keep your production lines going and you can't get access to those things, then obviously that will stop all of your production. But the longer term issue here doesn't relate to raw materials, it relates to technology. And when we talk about technology, it's not just microchips, because I think it's easy to think of technology being these super advanced chips that are made only in certain parts of the world. The other key form of technology that really applies to a lot of Russia is software. And most of the facilities and plants and machinery and all of the equipment that Russia has is dependent upon latest software. And if they can't access that software, then that's going to cause them breakdowns and real problems. You'll know yourself if you've ever encountered a software issue, it can be extremely frustrating and it can just cause 
everything to close down immediately. And lack of access to that software is going to be a major problem for Russia. And I'll come on to talk about it later in the video, but one of the most mobile forms of employment is IT. And Russia has seen a mass exodus of IT experts since the start of the war. So that will compound the problem that at a time when they need to develop their own software and their own technology, a lot of the experts who were in Russia are leaving en masse. Now, the export of gas is one of the biggest issues that we've been discussing on the channel since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Currently, a lot of countries in Europe are supplied with gas in a gaseous form. So it comes in pipelines directly from the Russian gas fields straight to the places that it's needed in each country. So quite often they'll have a gas fired power station which will produce electricity using that gas. And the replacement of all of that gas is one of the biggest logistical problems facing Europe because the alternative to gas in a gaseous form is to buy it in a liquefied form. And obviously then you need to then convert it back to gas before you can use it. And that's been a big challenge and is going to involve a lot of capital investment for a lot of countries in Europe. But the flip side of this problem is a major issue for Russia because if they're going to find new markets for this gas, they're going to have to find ways of delivering that gas. And the only viable way will be to convert it into LNG and then to ship it over the sea to countries such as India. There may be a possibility of putting a pipeline in place to provide gas to China. However, that's going to involve a huge amount of cost and also a lot of logistics to actually construct the pipeline. Now, so far, when we've talked about the loss of revenues for Russia, we've only really focused in on the primary revenue, what they're actually being paid directly for that gas. But this report goes on to look at what the tax implications are for the Russian economy. Because Gazprom, which is the Russian gas supplier, makes profit, it pays tax on those profits, and that tax is then used to build out the rest of the economy. The report states that a full cutoff of gas to Europe, which is Russia's main export market, could cost as much as 400 billion rubles, which is around $7 billion every year in lost tax revenues. And the report goes on to state that it won't be possible to fully compensate the lost sales with new export markets, even in the medium term. So the report is quite pessimistic in terms of the ability of Russia to replace the lost sales from Europe with other markets. And the reason that it's so pessimistic about the outlook is because Russia will now need to build multiple LNG facilities. The report states that the output of gas will have to be reduced, which will threaten the Kremlin's goals for expanding domestic gas supplies. And the lack of technology needed for liquefied natural gas plants is critical and may hamper efforts to build new ones. Now, I think this is a really important point because Russia does not have anything like the infrastructure that it needs in order to convert its gas reserves into liquefied natural gas. In 2021, Russia exported over 700 billion cubic meters of gas in a gaseous form. And when you compare that to LNG, it only exported around 35 billion cubic meters equivalent. So of the total sales from gas, 95% came from selling gas in its natural form, and only 5% came from LNG. And currently, Russia only has one operational facility for LNG production. Now, it's really interesting to note that Gazprom has been working on two new facilities, and these were due to open by 2025. Now, the problem with these new facilities is that they were being developed in conjunction with German and French companies. And clearly, those relationships have now ended, so Gazprom does not have either the support financially or the technological support that it needs in order to get those facilities operational. So Russia is facing a very real prospect of losing all of its gas markets. It's been happily sending all that gas through the pipelines for the last 10 years or so. And it simply won't be able to replace those markets because it hasn't got the facilities to convert the gas into a liquid form to be able to export it around the world. And in the absence of having any markets to be able to export to, there's going to be a real problem with regards to the existing infrastructure that Russia has set up because they've got their fields ready to be delivering large quantities of gas on a daily basis. And they either will face the prospect now of having to close those facilities, which will cause problems in itself, or they'll have to start burning the gas, so flaring the gas, which is obviously a complete waste of a valuable natural resource. And from an environmental point of view, isn't the best idea either. 
In terms of oil exports, the report is also pessimistic. Europe's plans to stop importing Russian oil products, which represented around 55% of all of Russia's exports in 2021, could trigger sharp cuts in production, leaving the domestic market short of fuel. The report went on to state that if the world economy slips into recession, Russia could see exports cut further as it becomes the swing supplier on global markets, with demand for its products disappearing first. That could trigger a plunge in the ruble and a spike in inflation. So I think the two issues that the report has identified are really interesting. The first relates to production. As you may be aware if you follow the channel, when you set up an oil drilling facility, you build it on the basis that you're going to pump the maximum amount of oil that will come out of that well. So once everything has been established and the flow has started, you want to keep that flow moving constantly. Now, the problem that you have as an oil producer is that there's nowhere to store your oil. You need to keep selling it on the open markets so that you can keep loading it onto ships or in Russia's case, into pipelines and sending it across the whole of Europe. And that then means that you don't have a problem with regards to having to slow down the flow. You can keep the flow moving as quickly as it's coming out of the ground, as long as you can keep selling it to everybody. Now, the problem that Russia is facing right now is that it's losing its biggest single market. And that market has been fed directly by pipelines. So whilst that's been really convenient for all of the European countries, it's also really handy from Russia's perspective because they can just feed all of the flow directly into those pipelines and that gets rid of the oil. It keeps it moving. Now that they're losing a lot of those markets, Russia is faced with a real dilemma because it will take more time to put that oil onto tankers than it does to feed it into a constantly moving pipeline. So Russia's now got an issue with regards to the amount of oil that's coming out of the ground. If they can't load the same volume of oil onto all of the tankers, then they're going to have to slow down that production because there's simply nowhere to store it. And that's what this report is identifying. It's stating that if the production is reduced, then we could see some issues starting to arise because when you start to slow down the flow, that can cause some serious issues and problems. You could get blockages or in a worst case scenario, you could even find that the flow stops entirely. So there are some really big operational risks that Russia is facing right now. But the key issue from this report is that if they do have to slow down production, so they've got less oil coming out of the ground, then that could have an impact on the domestic market because Russia at the moment is happily supplying all of its domestic market with very cheap oil. So if you're buying gasoline in Russia, it is super cheap compared to the rest of the world. And that's mainly because they've got so much of it. They've got such a surplus that they're wanting to sell it to all of their people at a low price. If they have production problems, if they have a reduction in the amount of oil that's coming out of the ground, then it not only will cause a problem with regards to overseas revenue, but it could cause a problem for the domestic markets as well. So there's a really big risk here that Russia could find itself in a situation that it's been happily living on very cheap oil supplies for the last 20 years. But if that was to stop, it would have a really damaging effect on the economy and it potentially could drive up inflation in Russia because the price of gasoline and other oil products could rise dramatically. Now, the other issue that's raised in this report is that Russia could go from being the primary supplier for a lot of markets to the swing supplier. And that basically means that people will only buy from Russia in the event that they need to. If they can't get the supplies from somebody else, then they'll go to Russia in a last resort scenario. And that's not what you want to be if you're a provider of any form of energy. Because of the issue we just discussed about needing to keep the flows going, you need to know where your markets are and that you've got really strong demand in all of those markets. The last thing that you want to do is be right at the end of the list because if global demand suddenly reduces, for example, because of an oncoming recession, then that means that you're off the list. You will be dropped by all of the buyers. They will carry on buying from their core suppliers and the swing supplier will be left on the sidelines. And that would be an absolute disaster from Russia for the reasons we just discussed about needing to keep the oil flowing. You need to keep it flowing and you need to keep selling it to keep it moving. If you're the swing supplier 
and suddenly people are not buying from you, then you're going to have to close down your production facilities. And that is the worst case scenario from Russia's perspective. So they've gone from being the number one supplier to most of the markets in the Western world to being sanctioned by most of those markets. And they're now having to fight the way in to the other markets because when they're selling to India and China, they're selling into markets and displacing existing suppliers. And that has two implications. Firstly, those existing suppliers are not happy. So they'll be talking to their counterparts in all of those countries and asking them why they're no longer buying their products. And secondly, there will be price competition because when you displace somebody, they will come back and try to win that business back, usually by offering a better deal. So when you've got price competition, that means only one thing, prices will go down. So from Russia's point of view, what this report is saying is that now that they've been dislodged from a lot of their number one markets, they're going to have to fight tooth and nail to get themselves onto the list. It's likely they'll have to offer price discounts, which they have been doing. We've talked about it before on the channel. They've been offering discounts of around 30% over the last six months or so. But even if they do get onto the list, they may well become the swing supplier. And that means that if we see a global contraction in demand, then Russia could find itself needing to find even more new markets because there just isn't demand for its products. So the overall summary on oil is that the report has identified a couple of really big risks to Russia going forward. The report has identified that metal producers in Russia are losing $5.7 billion per year from the restrictions. And I think this is one of the most surprising findings in the report because everybody has been assuming until now that the commodities side of life has been a positive for Russia. We've seen a big increase in the price of a number of different commodities. And Russia holds an important position in the global supply of a lot of different specialist items and is one of the biggest suppliers of a variety of different types of metal. But despite those price increases and Russia's strong position in the markets, the report states that the metal producers are losing money. Billions of dollars per year have been lost. And this is directly as a result of the sanctions because a lot of countries are now seeking alternative suppliers. So they're having to pay more than they would do if they were buying from Russia. But it's not about price. This is about political decisions. And I think that's really been a surprise to Russia because it's been used to winning business because it's offering deals at a low price. But at the moment, certain countries are not interested in getting the best deal and therefore Russia has lost business and it hasn't been able to find alternative markets to sell those metals into. And I think this is a recurring theme coming out of this report. It's not as simple as everybody expects for Russia to be able to find alternative markets. It doesn't work like that. If you lose a lot of your big customers and you have to then find a lot of small customers to replace them, it's a lot more work, a lot more logistics and a lot more hassle. And also they may well be having to offer big discounts to encourage those new buyers to replace their existing supply chains with Russia. Another surprising finding in this report is the impact on the farming sector in Russia. The farming sector is highly dependent on foreign supplies, with 99% of poultry production and 30% of dairy cattle dependent on the import of livestock feed. In addition, seeds for staples like sugar beets and potatoes are mostly brought in from outside the country, as are fish feeds and amino acids. The report therefore goes on to conclude that Russians may need to reduce their food consumption as supplies dwindle. So I think these statements are really surprising because the comments that I get a lot on the channel is that Russia is entirely self-sufficient, it produces lots of food and variety of other things and therefore doesn't need any contact with the outside world. But what this report, which was written by experts in Russia, so it's not me saying these things, it's people in Russia are providing this information. The report is saying that a large part of food production in Russia is dependent on some form of import. And in the short to medium term, those areas are going to be impacted and this could lead to shortages of food in a variety of different forms in Russia. The report highlights the fact that 95% of passenger volume is carried on foreign made planes and the lack of access to imported spare parts could lead the fleet to shrink as they go out of service. Now if you follow the channel you'll know that I posted a specific video talking about the impact of Airbus and Boeing's sanctions on Russia because in the aviation sector there's a lot of certification that's needed. When you fly a plane you need to make sure you've done all of the checks everything is legal and safe 
and that you're able to take off. And if your plane has been made by Airbus or Boeing, then you need to use official parts, including official software. So this goes back to the technology issue that we were talking about before. So now that those two companies have completely sanctioned Russia, Russia can no longer buy any replacement parts, but it can't get updates to the software either. So this is going to cause a really big logistical problem for Russia in order to fly planes. And Russia is a very large country geographically. So if you want to get from one side of the country to another, for example, to go to some of the LNG facilities that are based in the Arctic Circle, then you need to fly. So a lot of Russian business is dependent on internal flights. And the fact that they can no longer access any of these parts or software is going to cause a major problem. And this report has highlighted that fact. So it's not just the actual aviation sector itself. There's also a huge knock-on impact to business in Russia because if you can't move around the country because the planes aren't actually authorized to fly, then that's going to cause major problems. In the manufacturing sector, only 30% of machine tools are Russian made and local industry doesn't have the capacity to cover rising demand. So once again, the report is highlighting the fact that Russia is dependent on imports. It's reliant on a variety of equipment and parts and materials in order to keep its machinery moving. And of course, machinery is essential to manufacturing. So there's a knock-on impact to the dependence on overseas imports here, because if Russia can't keep making its own machinery because it can't get the parts, then it won't be able to keep its own factories open and operational. And so it will have a big impact on the economy. It's not just the fact that it can't produce machinery. It can't repair items when they break down in production lines. So there is a really big domino effect here when you look at the fact that Russia has built up its economy to be entirely dependent on its relationship with other countries. And now those countries are sanctioning Russia. In the pharmaceuticals market, the report has highlighted that 80% of domestic production relies upon imported raw materials. So once again, it's the same message. Russia is entirely dependent on the import of raw materials to produce pharmaceuticals. And of course, pharmaceuticals are absolutely essential, whether it be life-threatening or just something that you need for pain relief, you need pharmaceuticals to keep an economy moving. It's a very basic need of human requirement. If you're sick, if you're ill and you can't get access to any treatment, then you won't be able to work. So it will reduce your productivity and therefore will have an impact on the economy. Now, there are humanitarian rules in place, which mean that companies companies are still able to export pharmaceutical products directly to Russia in the event of it causing life-threatening situations for its citizens. So Russia will be able to access pharmaceuticals, but what this report is highlighting is that the pharmaceuticals market, the companies who are involved in pharmaceuticals in Russia, who are making profit, who are employing people, won't be able to access the raw materials. So they may be able to import the finished articles from some of the big pharma companies, but they won't be able to make them themselves because they don't have access to the ingredients to be able to make those products themselves. So once again, there is a knock-on impact here to the Russian economy because if these pharmaceuticals companies cannot operate, then they have to release all of their staff. So they won't be able to spend in the local economy and therefore you see a contraction. The report estimates that as many as 200,000 IT specialists may leave the country by 2025. And it's stated that the telecommunications sector may fall five years behind world leaders in 2022. And these are really interesting statements because as I mentioned earlier, now is the time for Russia to start developing its own IT and software because it's lost access to a lot of the IT from the Western world. So it needs to really get up to speed to try and develop its own in-house capabilities to replace what it's lost externally. And this report estimates that 200,000 IT staff could leave the country by 2025. However, the reports in the press that I've seen say that over 200,000 IT staff have already left Russia. And this is a combination of overseas workers as those companies have left Russia and Russian nationals. So I think the situation is actually far worse than this report indicates. And that, of course, is not good news for Russia because they really need to keep all of their IT people within Russia to try to get an area of expertise built up to try to get their own capabilities. And this report goes on to state that Russia may find itself five years behind the rest of the world. 
I actually think it could be significantly more than five years because they're losing access to world beating technology and it is very difficult to create your own IT. And we know that because after Russia's invasion of Crimea in 2014, Russia had a statement that it wanted to be less reliant on the West and to develop its own technology. And unfortunately, over the last eight years, it's been unable to do that because it's not as simple as just getting some guys in a room and saying, please create me some technology. It takes a long period of time and you need to build on all of your previous research and development. That's how development works in technology. You build upon the latest inventions and ideas and thought processes and software. Creating it from scratch is really difficult and that's gonna be a massive challenge for Russia and is a constant theme that's coming out of this report that the technological challenge is one of the biggest facing Russia and Russia's economy right now. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because it's always interesting to see reports that are coming directly from Russia. This report was prepared for President Putin to be able to tell him exactly what the potential impact of the sanctions will be on the Russian economy. And the figures and the information that we've seen are far more pessimistic than the official line that we're seeing coming out of Russia. The latest official estimates are saying 2.9% fall this year and 0.9% fall next year. However, this report is saying that the economy could fall by 11.9% next year, which is 13 times more than the official estimate. And the fall in the economy is not just related to one specific sector. We're not just talking about a reduction in oil revenues or gas revenues. We're talking about the overall impact. And this report states that there is going to be widespread impact and it's going to hit all sectors. And the fundamental issue at the heart of all of the problems is the fact that Russia does not have its own technology. It's reliant upon the rest of the world's technology. And the loss of that technology is going to cause them operational and production problems in all of its different sectors, particularly in oil and gas, because it's operating in some really difficult environments. A lot of their oil and gas fields are in the Arctic Circle, so it's really cold, the ground's frozen, there's a lot of issues with that. And so the technology that's being employed in those areas is cutting edge. And losing access to that technology is going to be a problem because if those facilities break down, if there's a problem with the software, if something doesn't work right, how are they going to fix it? And if they have production problems, then that means they'll have output problems and that's going to impact on revenue. So there is a major problem that will be facing Russia immediately. And as this report has identified, those problems are difficult to solve in the long term. And it's estimated that it will take until 2030 for Russia to get back to where it was in 2021. So that means that the estimated impact of the sanctions is that it's going to put Russia back eight years. But it's actually worse than that because this year, 2022, Russia was forecast to grow. It was expected to grow at around four or five percent. So a reduction of 2.9 percent officially or significantly more in reality means that Russia is actually going further backwards. And I think one of the really worrying points from this report from Russia's point of view is that comment about Russia becoming the swing provider. So being the provider of last resort with regards to oil and gas. So you'll buy from Russia if you need to, if there's a shortage in the market or some other issues going on. But if there's a surplus in the market, if you can buy from your existing suppliers, then that swing provider is not needed. So Russia could move from being the number one supplier of oil and gas to a lot of countries to being the last resort on the list. And if it gets to that point, then it's going to have major problems being able to manage the logistics of its production. Because as we mentioned before, you've got nowhere to store oil and gas. If it's coming out of the ground, you need to sell it. If you can't sell it, then you're not bringing it out of the ground. And if you're stopping those flows, then that will cause you problems in the future when you try to start them up again. So there are some really big challenges facing Russia. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. You found it useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already.